Wife's Cheating Past Challenges Trust The time frame is important here. We have been married for three years. We were together as a couple for two years before that, so we've been together for about five years. Two weekends ago, her sister got married, and of course, my wife was in the wedding party. So as you would expect, she spent the two weeks prior to the wedding, helping her sister get everything ready. No big deal at all. She kept me informed, and I knew this was going to happen. She took that Wednesday through Friday off of work to help her, and in fact, stayed with her three days. I certainly know her sister, but barely know the guy who is now my brother-in-law. In fact, I only met him a few times, but he seems nice enough. I show up Saturday morning, a few hours before the ceremony, in hopes of stealing just a few minutes to see her, not wanting to intrude on the day since I know she is busy, but I hadn't seen her since Tuesday. She sees me outside of her parents' house and sends her brother out to tell me that she will come out and see me at the car, which I thought was odd, but whatever. She finally comes out and sits in the seat next to me and gives me a kiss. But instead of acting happy to see me or whatever, she tells me that she has to talk to me and she doesn't want it to ruin her sister's day. She informs me that at the reception, if I still want to go, I might hear some things about the best man and her. And she didn't want it to be awkward or weird. I just kind of sat there, stunned. She said that about four years ago, she had a fling with him and it didn't mean anything but she was aware that by nature, I'm somewhat jealous, and she wanted me to know in advance so that if I heard something, I wouldn't be surprised. Again, I just kind of sat there. This was not how I thought my morning would go, but I told her I appreciated knowing it, and it certainly wasn't a big deal now. She went back in the house, and I went to eat lunch and decided to meet her at the church. As I'm eating and reading my phone, it dawns on me. She said she had a fling with him four years ago, and we've been together five. My first reaction was to blow it off and think that she just told me the wrong time. But the more I thought about it, the more I started to remember about a year and a half into us being together, she had a phase where she was really sketchy about her behavior, wasn't available when she normally was, and went on two weekend camping trips that were with friends from work. Of course, I'm a little knotted up over this, but I know I have a long day ahead of me. I go to the wedding and sit there watching everything. After the wedding, they have a line that you walk by and congratulate the bride and groom and the wedding party standing in line as well. My wife is standing with some other guy, I don't know him at all, but the best man was there and I just went down the line and acted like no big deal. Get to the reception and it takes forever for them to come because of photos. She finally gets there and sits with me. I decided not to say anything as I didn't want to distract from the day, but instead of just letting it go, she then tells me that each of the groomsmen and bridesmaids are going to dance and that she is going to be dancing with him. I ask why when she was not his partner for the party and she said that the maid of honor and her partner were actually married and wanted to dance with each other. At this point, I'm a little more than perturbed, but I try and not let it show. Thankfully, I was smart enough to not drink because I freely admit I'm an angry drunk. So I know when not to even partake. She talks to everyone around her and then the dance comes and he comes over and extends his arm and she gets up. I try not to watch and in fact, make it a point not to. She comes back with him in tow and they are joking like the best of friends. She decides that it would be a good idea to introduce us. And while I didn't say to fuck off like I wanted to, my greeting to him was probably less than cordial, but it did not deter him from sitting and talking with her for a few minutes. The more they sat and talked and reminisced about old times and places, the matter I got. Eventually, I got up and went to the bathroom, and when I came back, he was gone. She decided to tell me that she thought I was rude, which was not what I was all about hearing at the moment. I told her that this wasn't the time or place to talk about it, but rest assured we would talk later. She sat there and then said that she was going to change clothes, and as soon as she got back, she was telling her sister that we were leaving because I had ruined her day but she didn't want me to ruin her sister's day as well. I told her that I was perfectly capable of not being a bother to her or her sister the rest of the day, and that I did not want to be the cause of any drama, so I would prefer to just stay. She went and changed clothes and then came back all in a huff. Now understand, I have not said a word to her. I even shook the other guy's hand. I guess I just looked miserable, so that is what she was basing this off of. She was adamant about not staying. And so I said that if she really wanted to go, we could go, but if she would rather stay, 
I would be happy to stay, or if she would like, since I came in my own car, I would leave so she could stay. She, at first, said that we should stay, but then said if I couldn't act any better, I should leave. I asked how I was acting, and she said it was obvious I was trying to be like a silverback gorilla wanting to fight. I didn't know whether to laugh in her face or be offended. I went back in and sat down while she mingled with the other guests. I talked with her brother for a while, but then ultimately ended up back at our table, talking with her grandma. We leave at the same time, and I arrived home just before she did. I was sitting in the living room waiting on her when she came in and did not beat around the bush. I simply asked her to retell me the story about this other guy, and she said it word for word like before. After sitting and looking at her for a time, I just said, are you sure about the time frame? And she said she was. I then reminded her that we had been together for five years, so this fling was well over a year into our being together. What happened next, I can't really put into words. Instead of being flustered or denying or anything, she simply said, I know. So I asked her to explain, and she tells me that they worked together and that it was just a physical thing, and she felt like we weren't in a great place at the time, and that she never had any feelings for him and never had any real intentions of leaving me. She just was having some fun for a few weekends. She said that it was probably a mistake on her part to tell me now, but she didn't want me to get blindsided. I did not take this the way she thought I would, I guess. We had a very large argument and ended when she told me I was being a child about all of this, that we were married and this happened way before that and our life together now has nothing to do with him or that time. Well, two things. One, I adamantly disagree that this has no bearing on us. She fucking cheated on me and doesn't even have the goddamn decency to feel guilty about it. Two, I hate being told I am childish when I get upset over something. It pisses me off to no end because that is her way of acting superior to me. I told her I needed time to think and she told me there was nothing to think about. We loved each other and this didn't change anything. That was two weeks ago and I still am not over it. She has been trying the past few days to get me to talk to her, but I admit that for whatever reason, I'm not viewing her the same as I did before this. Part of me is like, this is stupid. It happened a few years ago and we are married now and there hasn't been any problems at all. But then part of me is like, I just found out she cheated on me and it hurts like a motherfucker. And what makes it worse is that instead of trying to understand how I feel, she is trying to guilt me into just not even thinking about it. I don't know what to do. Update one. The maid of honor, not my wife, was married to the groomsman who my wife walked down the aisle with. Some people felt my wife was trying to arrange the dance, but I know for a fact that this part was legit. However, it doesn't mean she didn't try to offer to let them dance or any other form of manipulation, but I just wanted to try and clear that part up a little. I'm here because I have received over 40 requests for an update since last week. Thank you for your concern, and I wish I had a bold statement about how I stood tall and kicked her to the curb, but sadly, that's not what happened. To be blunt, I'm in limbo. There have been developments, but all they have done is make it harder for me to decide. Last week I was mostly angry, then as the weekend progressed, I became mostly sad. I want to hate her and flip that switch that tells me I'm being walked on and am a sucker but it's hard for me to do that because I still love her. And this is ripping me apart. Here's what has happened of consequence. She finally came to the realization that I was not going to just get over this. This led to her having a near nervous breakdown. Someone stated that she would try to manipulate me like that. And believe me, I was taking those words to heart when I thought she was having crocodile tears. But it soon became apparent to me that she wasn't acting or faking. She was having a legitimate panic attack this led to an ER visit, an overnight stay in the hospital, new medications, and a scheduled follow-up with her doctor. This brought her family into it, which led to long conversations all around. When we got home, with her family in tow, I asked what she wanted to do since there was a house full of people, and she said she wanted to be with her mom for a while. That was fine with me, as I had no desire to hang around all day with her dad or sister, so I said I was going to finish up something at work and would be home later. Two hours after I get there, I get a text from her begging me to please come home and that she really needs me to talk with her. So I finish up what I was doing and head home. I am greeted on my own front porch by her dad, 
who asks if he can talk to me for a minute. My anger level was already somewhat high, but I was ready to go to war if she had dumped a shit sack of lies on me with her dad. I mean, it's not like he and I are best friends, but I've never had a bad moment with him, so I really wasn't going to be happy about being the bastard who broke his baby's heart. We sit on our deck chairs, and he fucking floored me with his opening salvo. I was expecting to hear anything but what he said. He said that she told them what had happened, and that he wanted to apologize to me because he felt like he did a really shitty job as a parent, and that this mindset that she had was really a creation of her mother's, and that while he loved both of them, he said they were wrong, and he had told his wife years ago that telling the girls that whatever happens before marriage doesn't count was a horrible idea and value system to instill in them. He then said that he wasn't there to stand up for what his daughter did, but he just wanted me to be aware that what she was saying and how she was acting was simply because she honestly believed that being married was an entirely different life, and that they, mom and dad, had romanticized marriage to the point that she wasn't understanding real life. Basically, he was kind of throwing his wife under the bus. But again, this is not what I was expecting at all. We shook hands, and he said that no matter what I decided, he still thought very highly of me, which honestly made me feel really good for that moment. I then went inside, and my wife is curled up in a ball on her mom's lap, and you can tell she has been crying the entire time I've been gone. Her mom gets up, comes, and hugs me, tells me she is sorry, that she loves me, and she is praying that we can work this out. My wife is laid out on the couch at this point. Her mom and dad leave, and she sits there looking at me and crying. Okay, this is where I'm going to piss off everybody and just tell you that I couldn't take it. I went to her, and we hugged for a long time with her, telling me over and over how sorry she was. Hey, I know it was the weak thing to do, but again, I have to say in my defense that just before this incident occurred, I loved her with all of my heart and would have done anything to not see her in pain. Whatever she had done, I still didn't want to see her like that. Look, it's very possible that she was putting on an Oscar-worthy acting job, but I don't honestly think so. She really seemed broken at that point in time. After a while, when she calmed down, I asked her what she wanted me to come home and talk about, and she said she wanted to get everything out in the open, so I didn't feel like I was being lied to or manipulated. So she wanted me to ask her questions, and I wish I had written down a list, but I came up with a few off the top of my head. She was brutally honest with me, and some of the questions I asked, I probably shouldn't have because now the mental image is stuck in there, but honestly, it was there anyway. I just now have confirmation. First, I asked for dates, or at the very least, approximate dates. I didn't tell her about the engagement concern I had because I didn't want her to change stories. And she remembered exactly when they occurred. Fortunately, this happened a little earlier in our relationship than she told me initially, so we were not engaged when this happened. I can't tell you what a relief that was because I became physically ill when I thought about that when someone said it in my last update. Second, I asked how many times she went overboard with this because instead of just telling me how many different dates, she decided to tell me how many times there was penetration. She wasn't doing it to be mean. She honestly thought that was what I wanted to know. This part of the conversation did not help me at all, and in fact, almost broke me down. In truth, it wasn't that often, and in fact, there were only three different days it happened on, but there were several times during those three days. Then came the hard part. Why did she do it? Okay, again, I'm not the most manly of men, and I am ashamed to admit this, but I couldn't get this out without starting to cry. I asked why wasn't I good enough? Why him? Why did she not just leave me? It was her turn to hold me, because at this point, everything came rushing at me. Her telling me, me having to watch them laugh with each other. Her now telling me how many times they did it and where they did it. She talked during this, but to this moment, I have no idea what she said. I was too upset. And honestly, nothing she was going to say was going to make a bit of difference anyway. But after I composed myself, I simply told her that the betrayal was horrible. But honestly, her response to me when I found out was just as bad if not worse. She agreed with me and she apologized for calling me immature. She said that she honestly believed that it wouldn't matter to me now because we were married. When she said this, my blood started to boil again. I started to say something about it. But she jumped in and said that after talking with her parents, she now sees that this was very wrong of her, and that cheating is cheating. 
but she still feels like that our happiness that we have shared since being married should count for something. I then replied that I kind of felt like that happiness was built on a lie. This led to another breakdown on her part and almost another ER visit. But between Adivan and having her breathe into a paper sack, we got her calmed down. I let her sleep the rest of the night, feeling like emotionally, we were both tired, but come Sunday, we were talking again. By this time, I wasn't as sympathetic as I had been when we got home from the ER. I told her that I thought her introducing him to me was shitty. Me having to watch her dance with him was extra shitty, and the fact that she only told me because she was going to get caught was an elite level of shitty. I demanded to know why she thought I would find out, and how many of the people at the wedding knew besides me. Well, obviously the guy knew, but then his best friend in the world also knew. Did I mention that fucker is now my brother-in-law? Which then led to her sister finding out, and she was afraid her sister was going to be the one to tell me. I asked how often she sees this guy, and she said that the wedding is the first time she has seen him in three years. Then I lost my shit and asked her if she fucked him during any of the lead up to the wedding. She got all pissy about it, acting like she wouldn't fuck anyone because she was married, and I just lost my shit and had to leave for a while, because once again, I felt like she was living on married planet or some such shit. And the world there is a different place than for the rest of us. I finally got cooled off enough to come home and try to be civil about things. She finally asked me what she could do to help me get past all of this, which may not sound like much, but it was the first time she offered to help me really, so it was at least a nice gesture. I told her I wasn't sure what she could do, or if there was anything either of us could do, and that I may never get over this. She said that she wanted to help because she didn't want to see me in pain, and that over the years, she hopes I'll be able to judge her based on who she is now. She would do anything I wanted to work this out. She also wanted to be sure that I knew that she has been 100% faithful since we've been married and would never cheat on her vows. I sarcastically thanked her, which I admit wasn't the most mature thing to do. I then asked for a moratorium from further talks till at least Wednesday. I have two projects I have to get done, and honestly, I'm just exhausted. And no, I have no fucking clue what I want to do. I shift between periods of red-hot anger where I want to kick her out, and then periods of deep emotional turmoil where I want to just forget this and move forward with her. Yes. I know this is not what anyone wanted to hear, and no, I'm not proud to type it, but it is what it is at the moment. Second update. As you know, I asked to just drop it till last night so I could focus on a job-related item I had to get done. She kept her word about it, but I could tell she was very emotional and honestly nervous. She is taking some strong benzodiazepines for her anxiety, but even as strong as it is, I can still see how anxious she had been. I wasn't intentionally trying to punish her. In fact, quite the opposite. I was trying to give her a break as much as me, but she told me last night that not holding her or showing any real affection towards her was almost torture to her. Well, last night finally arrived and we had what my dad always called a come to Jesus meeting. I got home from work and I brought dinner so there would be no distractions of cleanup or anything. We started talking around six and finally ended around two-ish. In that time frame, we laid out a lot of issues that have been present and what or if we are both willing to do to move forward. Long story short, starting today, I am living with my brother for the next few, not sure. She is understandably upset by all of this and I am making an effort to communicate openly with her so she does not feel abandoned or neglected. If you're wondering how we got from talking to me living with my brother, here it is in a nutshell. I want to save my marriage but I can't do it living what I feel was somewhat a lie. I know she never intended to lie once we were married, but when I sat down and thought about this one question, would I have stayed with her if I had known at the time she did this? Each and every time, I answered, no. So to me, she took away my ability to choose whether or not I wanted to continue, and we built the next few years based on the foundation of something that wasn't quite true. However, the truth is, we still built something. Sometimes foundations can be repaired, and sometimes you have to tear them down to build new ones. This is what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to shake things up enough for both of us so that we can start over. Like I said very early on, our marriage until this point had been what I would consider perfect or as perfect as any one thing can be. But there were some very troubling things that occurred due to this, and here is a brief synopsis of our talk. 
I laid out the fact that while I was absolutely upset about the cheating, and yes, I still consider it cheating, which she has now come to realize is the way it is and is going to be considered, I was equally upset by her lack of consideration for my feelings on this. I told her that I resented being told I was immature and a child for something that, objectively speaking, I had every right to be upset about. Her response was to apologize and tell me she was in the wrong and that while she admits fault and sees what I'm saying, that at the time she had convinced herself that because we were married, I was wrong to be upset about something that happened beforehand, but she now sees where this is wrong. I then told her that I felt very disrespected by her associating with this guy right in front of me and that I felt humiliated having to shake his hand. Her response was to once again apologize and she said that in her mind at the time, she felt like she was trying to show me that there was nothing there. She said she felt like if she avoided him or acted shady around him, that I would be more upset. I told her she was wrong. She said that out of all of the things, this is the one that has hit her the most in the face because even her sister has told her how poor this was for her to do to me. And she was deeply hurt by this because it had hurt me, which she never wanted to do. I then talked about her lack of remorse over being with someone else while we were together. Her only response was to say that she was very sorry, how that at the time, she just used very poor judgment. And if she could go back and change the past, she would. Then came the talk that got the most discussion, how I felt like she wasn't sorry for anything, but that she was just sorry that I didn't just shrug my shoulders and say that everything was going to be okay, that there were going to be repercussions for what I considered an act of betrayal and then an act of not caring about me. I'll give her full credit here. She was brutally honest about this, and at least she was, so we didn't have to spend hours trying to work our way around it. She admitted that when we got home after the event, she started to realize that I wasn't going to let this go, and then as time went on, she knew that this was an issue. Her first instinct was to be mad at me for being mad at her. But then she realized even from her own point of view how stupid that was. But again, she had it beat into her head that she was my wife and that I should easily forgive and forget something that happened way beforehand. But she now sees where this is wrong. She also did feel bad about bringing the guy around to me. However, you will notice, which I did too, that she never said she felt guilty about being with him. Now I want everyone to know this as well. What I have given you from above is a brief synopsis of events. She sounds like a robot in this version, and believe me, she was not. There were lots of tears, real honest tears. I've seen her, oh woe as me, tears before, so I know the difference. There were a few curse words, and there were even moments of pleading and begging. As I said, this went on for eight-ish hours, so by the time we were done, she was physically exhausted. I have set out the following steps if we are to reconcile, and it is totally up to her if she wants to stay together. She is very adamant about staying together, by the way. I don't care how illogical it seems. She is never to have contact with him again. This is an absolute for me and a deal breaker. And I was absolutely clear on this. We have to have couples therapy. While I was living with my brother, we were still legally married and this was not an invitation or excuse for either of us to see anyone else. Again, it was a deal breaker in a second if either of us used this as an excuse, believe me, I will not and I don't believe she will either. We decided to start over, to a point. I have to view her differently now. Even if I didn't want to, I can't just forget that she chose to cheat. That's where we were. I know that is not what some of you wanted, but ultimately, I have to go with what I believe will make me happiest in the long run. My head says to be aware, and I am going to guard my heart for a long time, but my heart is still in love with her. We went out on a date Friday night, which she was looking forward to. I had no idea how long I would be with my brother. Hell, I might not make it past Friday, but if nothing else, I felt like I had some control here, which I felt I had almost none of prior to the talk. In the end, I held her for a long time, and we slept together. I do not want a broken woman, right now, that is kind of what she is. I want her to be my partner for life, but I do want her to know that to be a partner, she has to equally care about my feelings as I do hers. P.S. I had to do some hard thinking about my new brother-in-law. Again, I've only met him a few times, and he seems like a nice enough guy. But at the end of it all, he certainly was aware of the issue. But just to keep peace in the family, I'm going to not make a stink about him, because that will certainly make every holiday tough going forward.
As long as he never mentions the incident, or the guy ever again, to or around me, I can live with it. The truth is, she knew perfectly well that what she did was cheating. She has never denied that. However, what she did do was think that being married was like crossing the finishing line, and that basically she got by with it. She hid it because she knew if I knew, it would be over. However, where her shock was, if I knew it after being married, I would still think of it as a big deal, and ultimately could end the marriage. I'm not sure if I was plain enough, so let me rephrase. She damn well knew it was wrong, and that it would have ended us if I ever found out about it. However, she thought that repercussion ended when we got married. She genuinely was shocked that I still was counting it as cheating, because it did not happen in the confines of holy matrimony. Yes, believe it or not, even though she did this, and has some other issues that would make you scratch your head, she is devoutly Christian. As you can tell, I am not. So while I think it's a crock of shit, there is a very certain religious aspect into what she sees as marriage. Third update. I've been staying with my brother for a little over a month. I cannot say enough nice words about him. He has bent over backward to help me, and I've come to appreciate him in a whole new way. Growing up, we were close but never really close, if you know what I mean. This has shown me that our bond is much stronger than I ever imagined it was. The big news is that I have delivered her with divorce papers. Now, before those of you who wanted me to dump her jump for joy, let me explain something. I went to a divorce lawyer and explained everything, including the fact that I did not want to go through with the divorce, but wanted everything in place just in case. He drew up a divorce decree and made three copies. One he kept on file, one for her, and one for me. I decided to take the paperwork to her myself, because I knew she would be upset, and I wanted to explain to her what was happening. I gave her the paperwork in a manila envelope, and explained what it was before she opened it. I also made very clear to her that I was not going to do anything with it, unless we both failed to meet the conditions we both agreed upon. I explained that I was committed to us, but really needed to see that we were headed in the right direction, and that this was only there as a standby in case she didn't think I was serious. Well, this did not go over as well as I had hoped, and in retrospect, this was a mistake on my part. She had been doing everything in her power prior to that to live up to the agreement, we had been out on several dates prior to this that were great for both of us. In other words, my timing sucked. My intention was good, but it did make it look like I was not acknowledging the steps she was taking to make this work. This led to another giant anxiety attack that we could not get under control with her meds, so off to the ER we went again. This time, they gave her a shot and sent her home, and we both agreed that we would keep her family out of it this time. I stayed with her for two days just to make sure she was okay. This, of course, came up in our counseling session. And well, let's just say that I came across looking like a manipulative asshole, which again, in retrospect, I was. I ended up taking my copy and her copy and tearing it up in front of her. She doesn't know there is a third copy, but I plan on having him discard that as well. So now, I pretty much feel like a monster because the look on her face when she got the divorce papers was something I never want to see again. She was so happy to see me that day, and then I gave her that, and then instant combination of sadness and terror. Other than that bump in the road, things have been going very well. Well enough, in fact, that I am moving back home this weekend. My brother has been great, but I am cramping his style, no matter what he says. It's been fun playing Xbox every night, though I won't deny it. But mostly, I am going home because she has done everything I have asked of her, and I have put her through hell. I think she's paid a steep enough price, and I know she knows how serious this was. Also, in case I didn't mention this before, I do love her. She made a very stupid selfish mistake, but it was years ago, and she had been almost the perfect wife up until that discovery. So, I'm sorry to disappoint many of you. And I'm sure I will once again get many PMs telling me that I am a cuckold and an embarrassment to all men. But I don't live your lives, and you don't live mine. So this should be it. There hopefully will be nothing to update going forward. We are not cured or healed by any sense of the imagination, but we are on our way, and it's just going to take time, patience, and understanding.